Here we go. Mmm. Mmm. Don't judge me here. Mmm. That's good. Don't act like you haven't eaten peanut butter out of the jar before. Don't lie to yourself. It says natural, so that should mean that it's healthy for me. Plus, okay, this isn't even a jar. Okay, technically it's a plastic container, so you can chill out. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back to Thugged Out Thursday, your TLG weekly commentary. Listen, today's episode is going to be full of a lot of passion, okay? There's going to be a lot of passion in this episode because, as many of you know, Halo is my favorite video game series, and Halo 5 just came out. So we have some very positive, constructive criticism for 343 Industries from the fans, so you know, they can get more feedback on what we want in order to make Halo 6 the best freaking video game ever made. And if you don't get down with Halo, then I suggest that you never meet me in real life, okay? <laughs> but before we get into that, guys, just like in all of our Thugged Out Thursday episodes, quick shout out to our Thug of the Week. This week's winner goes to a guy named Landon Stoolin. Now this is actually somebody I went to high school with, but the reason he's getting a shout out is because of the transformation that he's put his body through here in the last two or three years. He's lost a whole lot of weight and he's gotten himself into incredible shape. And I just think that he's a great role model for any of you guys out there that are struggling with either weight control or if you just wanna improve your lifestyle, he truly showcases the benefits that can come from doing that. So congratulations, man, you definitely are a thug. Now, if you yourself want to get the thug of the week or perhaps nominate one of your friends or family members, all you have to do is send me an email to thuglifegaming at yahoo.com letting me know what makes you a thug. Now, you know, the reason I really wanted to make this constructive criticism video is because of how great of a job 343 Industries did with Halo 5's multiplayer. They took a lot of constructive criticism from Halo 4 and they turned it into greatness. And for the people out there that dare say that Halo 5 is similar to Call of Duty. What? What? Do you even play video games? Like, is that a thing for you? <laughs> no, but this game is nothing like Call of Duty. The reason I bring that up is because Halo 4 was very similar to it. Halo 4 had loadouts, they had a perk system, they even had kill streak rewards. And they got such a backlash from fans because of that that they specifically made Halo 5 feel very much like the original Halos, but also with a new twist, and they did a phenomenal job. So in this video right now, we're going to talk about five different subject points that I think me and, you know, many of the Halo fans out there would like to see improved upon for Halo 6. Okay, now before we get started, I do want to say spoiler alert. Okay, if you haven't played Halo 5's campaign, I'm about to spoil some shit. Okay, because four out of these five topics have to do with the campaign of this game. Okay, so you have been warned, and I encourage you guys as we discuss each one of these topics to leave a comment below with your opinion or your feedback on each of the topics so that 343 Industries gets a better community understanding of what Halo fans want. So, topic number one is character development. Now, in past Halo installments, you've only really had, you know, just a few main characters in each game, but for the most part, it really centers around the story of Master Chief. However, Halo 5 kind of changes this up a little bit. You now have two teams of four Spartans. You have Osiris team, which is led by Spartan Locke, and you have Blue team, which is led by Master Chief. So essentially, if you're playing four-player co-op, which you should, because you'll have the most fun in the campaign by doing so, you're going to have the option to choose amongst these eight different Spartans to play as. But here's the problem. When you first select a Spartan from either of the teams, Osiris or Blue, you tend to select that same Spartan mission after mission throughout the campaign until you've beaten it. And you tend to grow a fondness for that character, you enjoy that character, and you want to learn more about them. But Halo 5 doesn't expand at all into the history of any of these Spartans or the relationship between them. So this ultimately affects the longevity of the game because by the end, you don't know any more about this character than when you started. 
which causes you to care less. But that's something that's easily improved upon for Halo 6. However, our next subject of discussion is a little bit more difficult to fix because it is now part of permanent Halo canon. We are talking about the relationship between Master Chief and the mother of my future hologram babies, Cortana. Now, by the end of <laughs> Halo 5, she basically betrays Master Chief and is now acting on her own independent will, not taking orders from him or the UNSC. But the reason I think you'll see a lot of backlash from fans on social media or forum pages is because as fans, we have now played four Halo installments with Cortana acting as Master Chief's sidekick. You can make the argument that she is every bit of a hero as he is for saving humanity because ultimately she completes him and he wouldn't have been able to do so without her. Now by the end of Halo 5 she isn't necessarily a villain because she thinks that what she's doing is benefiting humanity and the rest of the universe but she is acting against Master Chief and the UNSC. But there are points where she is acting very much like a villain like when she is insulting Osiris team for no apparent reason during the last mission it really does go against all of the character and personality traits that we've come to love over the years. But I'm sure with some dynamic storytelling, that is possibly something that can be fixed and I'm hoping so because I want to save my boo-boo. <laughs> but our next subject is something that I think really hits home for a lot of the Halo fans, and you probably heard about it in video game news around the launch of Halo 5, and that has to do with the marketing campaign behind the launch of a game. Now, I'm sure many of you have heard about the Halo 5 advertisements, whether it be about Chief being hunted down by Spartan Locke, or him being labeled as a traitor, or possibly killed in action, all of it was a complete lie and had nothing to do with the actual game. This ultimately sets your fans up though to be disappointed. You know, I've heard a lot of the fans out there talking about they feel as if they were taken advantage of or deceived by 343 Industries. And I think this ultimately creates uh, a lot of trust issues and just a lot of conflict in the Halo fan community. And I think that's something that we can all agree on is something that we, we really don't want. Okay, the, don't get me wrong, the marketing campaign behind this game was phenomenal. It got me super excited and hyped. It was all very well done. And I'm sure, you know, Halo 5 sold really well at launch and will continue to sell well because it's a great game. But if I had to send a message to 343 Industries, it would be, you know, if you're super passionate about the plot of your video game and you truly believe it's going to sit well with fans, then simply advertise it. But moving on to our next subject, okay, this is something that I think 343 Industries did on purpose, but I don't think necessarily worked well enough in Halo 5, and we are talking about plot structure. Now, what does that word mean? Well, plot structure is the multiple parts that make up the entire story of a campaign, a novel, uh, you know, a TV series, or even a movie. This consists of things like an introduction, a buildup, a climax, uh, a conclusion, you know, things of that sort. Unfortunately, though, Halo 5 is missing a few of these parts. Um, introduction, for instance, Halo 5 has absolutely no introduction. You basically have eight Spartans that are dumped at your feet right at the start of the campaign, and unless you know a lot of the Halo lore, either through reading the novels, the comic books, or watching the animated series, you don't know really anything about probably six of those eight Spartans, and it leads to confusion. Now, Halo 5 has a lot of buildup, which is a very good thing, but the climax of this game is somewhat disappointing. Uh, the campaign consists of Master Chief trying to find Cortana. When he finally does, she imprisons him, Osiris team rescues them, and she just gets away. So you're back at square one, nothing is resolved, and you're actually left with more questions than you had at the start of the game. So you can see how the structuring of a plot can actually cause a lot of frustration. But you know, I personally know that 343 Industries are great storytellers. Halo 4 is a perfect example of that. I love that game's campaign. And the Hunt the Truth audio series is another perfect example. Season 1, Season 2, both amazing stories so I know they can do that and I hope to see it in Halo 6. 
Now, you'll notice in the background of this video a transition into a new environment, which showcases our fifth and final topic of discussion, which is multiplayer map diversity. If you watched my Halo 5 Guardians video review that I posted last week, you'll know that I did touch on the subject a little bit, but now I want to expand on it. Halo 5's multiplayer maps are by no means bad or boring, but they could be visually improved. All of the maps that make up the arena playlists consist of a lot of metallic structures and buildings, whereas some of your older Halo maps used to be within natural environments consisting of, you know, rock formations, trees, grass, moss, and even, uh, you know, bodies of water. Now, Warzone and Halo 5 actually are all outdoor environments, and they look phenomenal. It's just that, you know, for for the players that play mostly arena, you're stuck with, you know, environments that aren't as visually appealing and it's just kind of one of those things that if you tweak a little bit, it greatly improves the likability of your game to keep fans engaged for a long time. But that is it for this video, guys. Again, this is constructive criticism. I absolutely love Halo 5 Guardians. You know, my YouTube channel is just a way for me to voice my opinion and express myself. So, you know, I just want the Halo franchise to be the best it can possibly be. And I think user and fan feedback just like this is going to help to do so. Now, don't forget to leave a comment below so that 343 Industries can see the community's feedback on all of this input. Share the video with your friends. Click that thumbs up button and subscribe if you're digging the videos. But I'll see everybody here in a couple of days. Keep living debt life because that is what thugs do. I'm out of here, guys. Take it easy.